Okay, we fired Fred. He's no good. He's no good. He made the battery and the camera go dead, so you missed everything. All right, so I moved it until the points were just starting to crack. I moved it back slightly. I kind of wiggled it back and forth until I found the spot. Then I went ahead and slid this over against the stop, and I tightened the screw down here, which tightens the band under the distributor. Now, you're going to mark that right there so we know where it's at? Sure, why not mark that. So where's the felt tip? Oh, I get the camera back now? I'm back to the cameraman. Then the cameraman can. I can do most things, but not everything. Cameraman can. Okay, you now what's the reason why we do this? So we know where the mark is. I know where it's at. Okay, now these are the old style big fat spark plugs that I like. Big fat spark plugs. Not those new stupid ass shitty ones that have those small hex on them that I don't <clears> like. <throat> okay. Putting the spark plug. And if you used a factory tool that I made. Oh, yeah. That I made. Oh, you made? Not factory then. It fits my military bag. And you also have it fits the old style plug that they don't make anymore. They don't make anymore. See, these plugs are brand new 15 years ago when the motor was built, so they're still good. <laughs> okay, so they're on there. Only 15 years ago? Yeah, maybe. He's only been working on this thing for 20 years, so what the hell? One behind us about 18 years. What? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy yeah. that bike there under that green cover. See, it might get finished then. Okay, so we got that done. We got this so now it works. It has a stop so we can time it. This piece here failed. Yep. It's sitting. Now we had some gas over there, remember? Yeah, we had gas. We got gas. Petcocks are still on. Petcocks. No, I, off, I know better than what Petcocks on on a Harley. Okay, now we gotta go over here and put the timing hook plug back in that Fred took out. I didn't take out. Alan took out. Fred watched Alan take it out. I did do that. Alan just about broke his wrist. And that wasn't from taking a nut out. <laughs> okay, yeah. so that's out. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, is that an nice inside story. joke? Is that an inside joke I missed? No. <laughs> okay. Fred. Now we had the thing primed, but now it's lost its head. Right up. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and prime it again. Turn the petcock back on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> man. Turn the choke on. Choke's on. Suck some fuel. We got compression. On both cylinders, we got compression. There we go. Okay, I gotta reach under here. Make sure the throttle. I gotta get partial slurs. throttle. Partial throttle. I need some ignition down there. Ready for the ignition. I need to retard the ignition over here. You ready? Here. Ready? Yeah. You have. Ignition. So I retarded the ignition slightly on my side. Kicks was that? About five, six. Okay. And we'll start on the first one. But only time. two. But it farted kicks. on the first kick. And Fred jumped back in panic mode. You hear that? Well, he got Are a big you, whiff yeah, of raw just, gasoline yeah. right in his puss. That didn't help any. I wasn't panicked. I'm trying to get out. He's sucking down. Yeah, you're the one to stand in front of a valuable carburetor. Standing in front of this POS carburetor. It POS it starts up and idles right off the bat. Not bad for sitting for six, seven years now. I thought we said 15 years. Pretty nice. No, that's the bike's been on a project for over 15 years. Oh. The motor's been done for over 10. Okay. It hasn't run in probably five or six. Okay. Now we, now we nailed it. It's only run for like 10 minutes total anyway. Still a brand new motor. Okay. Now, you think we have enough time to let oil do what it's supposed to do in there yet? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so now we're going to start up and do that again. Okay, here we go again. 
This is your break-in procedure on anything new, huh? Well, it hasn't run in forever. So no, I'm just saying. I just, don't know if there's even got oil in it yet. Right, right. I got you. We haven't even looked inside here yet to see if the oil is right, turning. Right, I got you. I got you. The motorcycle. Well, I know I couldn't get so it. Not just, I, it rub, I could, not just rubbing around. Well, I know I couldn't get it. It was just laying there. Gino spotted it. Okay, don't. I was trying to make it run faster. Let it sit for a minute. All right. If okay. You, if you connect that, it's going to start making juice in it again. Okay, where's the flashlight, Fred? Is that your car in front? Now, if it's getting oil pressure, there should be foam in the tank. Now. Oh, look at that. It's got sort of foam in there. Look at that mucky oil in there. I can't tell. Oh, I can see it. Where's the, the light? light on? Why do you have the light on? See the green oil and the black oil mixing with the green oil. Means that... So the, the green oil is almost totally mixed now. It's gone over about an inch since we ran it. That's the black oil that was in the motor from when it ran years ago. There's some fresh... No, that's the spill tank there. It's hard to so there you go. So it appears that the oil flow is somewhat working. So now I'm going to start it up and watch the oil level. And it should squirt. Oh, there's still green in there. You just can't see with that film. So we have a, l a large amount of fresh oil in there and a very, like a three inch circle of black crap on top. They do not appear to be mixing very well. That's good, huh? Hmm. Okay, so. We well, appear that we need a better ground than where we had it because that one fell off. This would hold good here. Well, right here. <clears throat> That's not a good ground. I need a ground wire. Okay, so. One of the screw holes. If it were me, I'd put it right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good spot for it. I'm thinking of nice something call, Alan. better for that. I'm trying to be a comedian this late at night. Oh, what the hell. Yeah, no. I know. Really? Come on. How about right on the carburetor so we get some sparks going Yeah, on. get Carbon. some sparks going on and fumes. Okay, so we got the retard over here. Retardant? You're not watching how much I retard it. So <laughs> Modern terminology is just tarred. You see, there's your retard right there. Yeah, tarred back. Tarred, you're not Bring it back about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths. <laughs> Have you got the power reconnected? Yeah, yeah. it's about the right spot. Move it around right. Something ain't right. No spark. No spark. We've got no juice. What's going on? It's not a good ground. It means that our ground is not very groundy. We need a better ground, sir. Yeah, Put it on the bolts holding the damn coil on. There's not enough sticking out to do that. Hmm. Something else? Yeah, the fender? Up. How about the fender one? Fender's not a good ground, that's why it fell off. Can we go up here? This is ground and field, is it Give not? me the ground wire underneath. Too far, but that's a good ground. I think we have juice there, and I can kill it easily, but now I got mm. access to it. All right. Okay.
We in neutral now? Yeah. Yeah. Was, that was about almost full throttle there with the brake on. Yep. Yeah. Had the brake buried and still full throttle till it. It loaded up, took the load, so. Yep. Yeah. Good sign. I'll give it a couple minutes to cool a little bit and start up again. Yeah, All right. Falling off already. I'm gonna have to get out of here soon. All right. We just got it. We got it started. All right, taking a break. Okay, we got the bike. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. try putting the ground wire down here on the exhaust clamp. See if it stays on better. So the brake, uh, the nut that holds the brake on, so it fell off. So nothing important. I gotta take this all off to put the chain guard on here. So that's why I'm finished that side up yet. <coughs> so we're gonna go ahead and start this thing up here in a minute or so, and uh, put it back in gear and. Put a little load on it, see if it shifts. See if we can get this thing to destroy itself before we let it off the rack. So, you like my hand throttle over there? Yeah. yeah just work with your hand. So, we'll see if the battery won't keep vibrating off the rack there. All right, so you work that. You like my metal exhaust that I got from Yeah, I like it. Put the cover on, maybe that's making it more stuff.
Did you go through the transmission also? Did the whole bike over the last who knows how many years. Nothing on this bike was together. It's just a big pile of crap together. All mixed up years, decades, 20s, 30s, and 40s mix. So, appears to be working. Headlight fall off? This crew found I forgot to tighten those up. Falling apart. Falling apart? The muffler sounds good. It does. Success. It, uh, it spits flame out of it when I get after it. A little bit. Good. Get warmed up a little bit. So we ran it out of gas out of the carburetor, so it's dry in there. So now it's just a matter of uh, making everything else that makes it rideable. We got to put the uh, handlebar controls on it and uh, wiring and battery and charging system and stuff like that. The only thing I really got to fix next, I got to get the chain guard button up the rest of the way. I bought the kit that puts the spring and stuff in here to hold it on. So I got to take the wheel off probably to do that, but oh well. And the rear stand's not going to work unless we lengthen at least an inch. So I don't know if we're going to do that or not. Obviously, I like the rear stand. They work real good. Yeah. So, but that's up to the customer if he wants that or not. we got to figure out what we're going to do for handlebars up there. Use a big, wide, stupid stock set. That set, or I'll do a custom set. I got pieces I bought years ago for it. But uh, anyway, it runs again. It's been a while. Nice. But uh, breaking, in the, breaking in the rings right now. Sounds good. Yeah. Didn't anyway, smoke at all. There's a wrap. There you go. Cool. All right, we're going to light this thing off again. See if it runs. So there's about this much oil in it right now. So that means some of it's in the crank. I'll just put some gas in it. So turn our pet cock on. We'll get our ground wire hooked up here. Our hot wire goes right to the hot side of the coil. Not the point side. And this is our ignition switch right here. You like that? It works. So we got the chain guard over here mounted. Got the uh, brake all in here like it's supposed to be now. We broke the brake in last time we were running, making dyno runs in, in, up here in the rack, so we adjusted that. Chain is still good. For a few more runs. All right, the distributor's right here. So we reach all the way in this van. So we pull it back a little bit for retard. The throttle is closed right now. So now we're at full choke. Got the choke on on the other side. We'll give it three kicks and it turns power on. On there should be wet. Mm, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so full choke, come back two clicks. One, two, three, four. It's a hot night, so we'll go one click on. Should be enough. Okay. Hook that up on the battery post for me. Yeah, okay, here's that power. Get a spark. Mm -hmm. Spark. You had some nervous fuel over there, you said, wasn't it? Yes.
there. Oh, I think we're going to have to reinforce the lines a little bit. Yeah, would at least insulate them. Yeah, I can't figure what the fuel mixture wants to be. Yeah, one and a half. Yeah, one, one, one and three quarter out. I'm going to end up gassing here. Yeah, a little warm up, a little cool off a little bit. I'll come back. So, we've got to tie up our lines a little bit. I figured we had to do something. With it. It's just shaking like that, eventually they'll break. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I had some uh, little plastic clip things I found on the, um, on Dodge. I'm going between some of the lines. Right. And, uh, so off the Durango, I was throwing all those parts in that Durango. I found some clip things. I think I left them outside. I'll go get those. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to set the motor under load before I got the tire spinning it. But it's not being consistent. It runs good and it starts crapping, so I think it's, we didn't put much gas in it, so it's probably starting to suck out of gas. I know the battery's not dead. <laughs> but, uh, oh well. We'll be back. Okay. Okay. Well, we've got some clamps I just put up on the oil line up under here. So here's the clamp right here. So. You slide it back to where it gets tight, and that keeps this line from rattling up in here. Ah. So that ties it in pretty good right there. So these are off of my 98 Dodge at Dakota. So they're uh, kind of a harder plastic type material, not rubber. But uh, anyway, this is the line here I haven't done yet. So this is the one I hooked up on top, up underneath, and this one over here. So basically these just pop around the line there. So just pop it on like that. Do the same thing on this one right here. Slide it up toward the top where it feels good. And that ties them together so they don't vibrate and rattle. And they don't look too bad either. So I don't know if they still make these. It would be nice if they did. These were on the uh, air conditioning condenser lines where these were on. So, have to see if I can buy some more. <laughs> it's a nice clip, doesn't look too bad, does a good job. It always helps. Okay, I'll go ahead and light this thing back off again. I'll put a little more gas in it. The problem I had before was there's no throttle on this bike, so I had it fully at idle and it was too low of an idle. So you just barely crack the idle and that should make it start a lot easier. Shouldn't need any, ch any choke, it's already hot. Make a difference? Yeah. Oh. You ran out of gas in the fuel line. Me, yeah, that's why I didn't want to run. Dumbass. Hey. Damn, it's never run that bad before. What the hell is wrong with this <laughs> It's one o'clock in the morning, man. It's all right. Yeah, is that the problem? There's no excuse.
choke is still on. Exhaust pipe fell out. Okay. See over here. That makes it sound a little weird. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure why that rotated forward. You'd think that clamp would be enough to hold it, but evidently the whole thing just kind of rotated down. So that means I'm going to probably have to put a clamp up right over here to help hold it up. Mm -hmm. And that being down out of that is what's making it probably sound really, really crappy and idle. It rubbed up pretty good. That part was starting to run better. But... All right, we're going to let it cool all the way down. I'm going to do a valve adjustment on it. And then we're going to come back and get the pipes all rearranged and try lighting it off again a little later. So another day. There you go.